Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Political Vigilante. My name is Graham Elwood. I am joined by the uh, journalist and uh, I guess creator, co-creator of Status Quo, uh, Jordan Sheridan. Jordan, how you doing this afternoon? I'm good, Graham. A little tired, but I'm delighted to be on your vegan paradise. <laughs> Welcome to Graham's vegan paradise. As much as I would like to talk more uh, vegan smoothie recipes with you, uh, Jordan, which I'm sure you were excited. That's the main reason you wanted to come on the show. But um, we wanted to bring you on the show because you have been covering the Flint water crisis really since it began. And some pretty big news rolled out yesterday that you covered. You pushed that out on 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 Status Coup. And I know it's uh, probably why you've been so busy. But so why don't you just tell our audience what happened yesterday and what it means in the totality of this of this water crisis that's been happening? Yeah. So uh, interestingly enough, we broke uh, my partner, Jen and I broke a massive story uh, with The Intercept. And uh, essentially what we showed is the cover up. We showed the real time cover up of the Flint water crisis that uh, Governor Rick Snyder was actually involved with directly. Um, and at the same time we broke that, uh, the sitting attorney general uh, leaked the charges against Rick Snyder, which uh, was just described to me by a Flint resident as a parking ticket for poisoning people. He got a misdemeanor willful neglect, uh, which is uh, up potentially, if convicted, a year uh, in prison. Uh, and a thousand dollar fine. He's a millionaire, by the way. Um, so what Jen and I broke uh, with the intercept, and I've been working on this for over a year. This this information that we broke was so there was two investigations in Flint. Think about it this way: uh, you know Robert Mueller with RussiaGate. He was a special prosecutor. Originally in 2016, there was a special prosecutor hired for Flint, not Robert Mueller but you get the point, a special prosecutor. And he was separate from the Michigan attorney general. His so investigation- Just to clarify, he was hired by the feds or by the state of Michigan? State of Michigan. Okay. Um, so that the state wouldn't be investigating itself, basically. So they hired an independent counsel. His investigation was for three years. Uh, and in 2019, the new attorney general, a Democrat, uh, cleaned house. She fired the special prosecutor and his whole team who had been investigating for three years. So our report is on what the original investigators found. Uh, and what we found was the original investigators, uh, they found an avalanche of phone calls, you know, through search warrants uh, with Governor Snyder, his chief of staff and the, and the head of the health department. Uh, the head of the health department and the chief of staff were on the phone nine times in two days in the middle of October 2014 when Legionella, the Legionella outbreak, which killed PBS reports, possibly 115 people, uh, when Legionella was basically, alarm bells were going off in Snyder's environmental department and Snyder's health department. Uh, the governor was on the phone with his chief of staff. Uh, the chief of staff was on the phone with the health, de health department. So we got this sequence of calls. And in nine of those phone calls, Graham, where the chief of staff is on the phone with the department of health director, right when they hang up, chief of staff right away calls the governor. That's what we call a, a cutout, uh, a middleman. <laughs> so the chief of staff called the governor right after getting off the phone with the health director. They also found that the chief of staff was calling a, a hospital association with ties to the very hospital that had the Legionella outbreak. So why just, this was people a timeline just so so October of 14 when the Legionella came out this is basically when the when the Flint water crisis first kind of started right yeah they switched the water to the Flint River which for those of you that don't know think about like the Hudson River in New York or I don't know what you got in LA but I mean this is where they pollute uh industrial waste is dumped in the Flint River General Motors dumped in the Flint River for a century this is not where you want your drinking water from so they switched in April 2014 the reason they switched is a whole nother story. It was a privatization scheme. But putting that aside, six months after, you got residents have rashes already. They're showing up to City Hall with brown water jugs. The water stinks. And the city and the state are telling them, oh, no, 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 it's, it's, it's all right. You could drink it. But there was a Legionella outbreak. And Legionella can kill you. It, it's a deadly waterborne disease. It's a bacterial 
uh, disease. And it's, it's like a pneumonia, a bacterial pneumonia. So the Snyder's environmental department was aware that there was a huge increase in Legionella in the Flint area. His health department was aware. His whole argument, by the way, in front of Congress, he testified under oath in front of Congress, was essentially, yeah, nobody told me. I'm the governor. Nobody told me. But he said he found out about it in January 2016 and held a press conference the next day. Our evidence and the original investigation found he knew about it on October 2014. It just so happened, Graham, it was a few weeks before his governor's re-election. Oh, what out. weird that that couldn't come out right before an election. That's odd. It was also uh, reports where he was angling. This was before Trump ran down the escalator and, you know, hijacked everybody's brains. He was angling to run for president in 2016 before Trump announced. So October 2014, he's on the phone with his chief of staff. He's on the phone with his, uh, the health director. It's all laid out in the story. Then five days after that, they found a briefing. It was titled Governor's Briefings, plural that it mentions Legionella in writing that was addressed to the governor. So bottom line is all these phone calls. There's an in writing briefing. There's other evidence that's in the story that his environmental director knew about it. The environmental director reports to the governor. Um, so our, what we broke was that the original investigation team who was fired basically by the new attorney general, who's a Democrat, they were, they were gunning for involuntary manslaughter against Governor Snyder, which would have been at a minimum 15 year felony. They also found evidence, definitive evidence for misconduct in office felony uh, with the misdemeanor neglect of duty charge. But the, the main thing was they were about 75, 80% away, uh, 75, 80% there to charge him with involuntary manslaughter before they were fired by the new attorney general. And the new attorney general announced today um, charges against nine people, including Governor Snyder. She claims she was not involved with the investigation. She recused herself and left it to others. Uh, but they, after the original investigation, which I broke, was gone for involuntary manslaughter, they announced willful neglect of duty, which is a misdemeanor. And importantly, Graham, they charged Governor Snyder's top advisor, who in Flint, in state government, was known kind of as his henchman, his right-hand man, his his fixer. They charged him with extortion, perjury, obstruction of justice, and misconduct in office. So the question is, how is the governor's top advisor and right-hand man going around extorting people, obstructing justice, and doing all these things without the governor knowing? So it's, uh, you know, and one has to wonder, Graham, why do you think they announced this while the president was being impeached? Uh, in the after, after aftermath of a capital attack, uh, it doesn't seem like if you want to if you want attention on something, this would be the prime time to do it. I mean, yeah, of course, this is what they do. Then when they're doing something horrible, there's always some big distraction. And not that what happened at the Capitol is some sort of small thing that they're blowing out of proportion. It is a significant thing. But of course, it will be used uh, for stuff like this. To, I mean, this is just like. Uh, and of course, of course, it's a, the Democrats are at the root of this. And, it, you know, they're supposed to be the big heroes. And, oh, they're no, the Republicans are so evil. But look what the Democrats have done here. So, I, I mean, what's what's I guess my question is and I don't you know, I'm not a lawyer, but and and I know you're not as well. But what is the it, from a legal standpoint, can anything be done with the information that was gathered during the initial investigation? I mean, well, first of all, I think it's important to say, I know for a fact um, that the current investigation that charged the governor with a misdemeanor has all of the information I reported. So they have it. They know about these phone calls. These phone calls were basically a smoking gun. I mean, they're not on the phone, bang, 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 bang for two days talking about the weather. Um, they have this briefing that was addressed, governor's briefings that mentioned Legionella. So they have it. It kind of is dumbfounding how one set of investigators, who, by the way, it was a registered Republican, was a special prosecutor, how one set of investigators could see misconduct in office, neglect of duty, and were, were moving towards involuntary manslaughter. But this one says 
the only thing they could the only thing they could prove beyond a reasonable doubt is neglect of duty. Um, to be fair to the current investigation that announced it today, they legally said they cannot disclose what their evidence is because that that would come through the legal process, you know, discovery and then going to going to trial, they will release the evidence. But they have this evidence because I know for a fact some of the people on the current investigation were with the first investigation. So it's it's really mind boggling. I mean, as somebody who's covered this, you don't need to be a lawyer to know um, the governor of Michigan cannot, cannot not know what his what his top environmental officials know who report to him, what his top health officials know who report to him. Um, this, this is just not possible. He also, I mean, for Vice, so before this intercept story, Jen and I broke a story for Vice, the, his right-hand man, if you, th like, think of the Sopranos or whatever, the mafia, mm -hmm. his consigliere, like his, his guy, his fixer, mm -hmm. was going around Flint offering payoffs to sick residents. Like, sick residents would go ballistic at town halls. They would get media attention. And all of a sudden, the governor's right-hand man is in their living room offering to pay for their medical treatment, but you can't tell anyone the state's paying for it. That's called, that's called a payoff. That's called a bribe. Um, the, the residents I spoke with said, yeah, he said, I'm going to talk to the governor about this when I get back. These deals. So, you know, I've spoken with a lot of people today on camera and, and, and quite a few off. And, you know, they think politics is involved here uh, for whatever reason, you know. They didn't want to go for the king. Um, and it really, I don't really, you know, I don't know. Um, I don't know why the Democratic attorney general, she never really explained in depth why she fired these. Like this would be the equivalent of Robert Mueller doing a two year investigation and like Joe Biden coming in and just firing him and just let's redo the investigation. Like MSNBC would go ballistic, right? Yeah. Yeah. She just said her excuse was, uh, there was deficiencies in the investigation. They didn't get all the evidence. They didn't, you know, sloppiness. Well, stay tuned because there's a part two. There's a big reason why they couldn't get some of the evidence. There was an unprecedented guerrilla war where Snyder and his lawyers were, wouldn't give them the briefings, wouldn't give them the emails, wouldn't give them the documents. And the attorney general over this special prosecutor was a Republican who was enabling Snyder to not do that. <laughs> because the Republican attorney general was running as governor to replace Snyder. So obviously the Republican attorney general, you know, if you're going to charge the sitting Republican governor, it might not help your chances to win the Republican nomination for governor to win the governor. So this is a whole, there's so many layers to this corruption, but the bottom line is, you know, if you are a governor, if you are a senator, if you are a congressman, but particularly a governor, a, particularly a mayor, an executive, and you can basically say there was a failure at all levels and there was a bureaucracy and nobody brought it to me. And you could get away with that. You could get away with saying nobody told me, nobody brought it to my level. Then that's not a good sign for your neighborhood. Because if governors and mayors and executives can get away with saying, yeah, this thing that was right underneath me, um, nobody brought it to my attention. It's going to happen. It is happening. It's happening in a lot of places, whether it's water, whether it's mining, whether it's fracking, you name it. But our story with The Intercept, I think, to the common sense, objective person shows this governor, his chief of staff, his health director, were on the phone like a bunch of drunken teenagers for two days, scrambling while the topic of Legionella, there were emails from his epide from health epidemiologists saying uh, the, hypo uh, the, the source of the outbreak is the Flint River. There were the governor's environmental advisor two days before these phone calls sent an email to his chief of staff, to Snyder's chief of staff, pleading for Flint to be switched back to Detroit. So right now, October 2014, there's still time to save lives. If you stop it then, if you switch it back to Flint, sure, could be a lot of egg on Snyder's face for allowing it in the first place, but there's you could save lives. They allowed Flint to stay on that water for another year after that. Children, I, I've sat on porches, Graham. Children forget the alphabet. 
children can't count to 10. I've met people when I met them five years ago, they were 35, looked somewhat, somewhat healthy. They're dead now. I've met people that have, are, are in kidney failure. I've met people that now have Parkinson's. I've met people uh, that have thyroid cancer, not like 75, 80. I'm talking 30, 40, 50, no family history. So it's really, it's a disgrace because this is also a failure of the media. I mean, I'm not from Flint. I'm not even from Michigan. And I've been there 17 times, not because like I'm so special, but because as a journalist, you should just give a damn if people are poisoned and left to die by their government. And I think it's, you know, I think a lot of Flint residents, I've spoken with them, are, are wondering today, how does a governor who presided over this get charged with a misdemeanor? Well, yeah, the, 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 the crime is, is, I mean, there's, it's on so many levels. As far as the media concerned, that was the thing was like, how come you were the only one going there? I mean, literally, for they went there initially and then left. I mean, like it, 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 I mean, I remember doing the first time I was on aggressive progressives four years ago, 2017, you were still reporting for TYT and you were, I mean, like you, you've been covering this and nobody, nobody else. And then this, and even the way they release this news of that he's being charged, they just say, Char Snyder charge. And they make it seem like, oh, they finally got him. And then if you got to, you got to, you got to thumb through the corporate media to go, oh my God, he got a fucking, he got an after school detention. Like that's it. That's all he got was nothing. And, and of course, I mean, this is, this is again, another, if you want to, if you want to pull, pull it back wider, it's just more reason why this horrible two-party duopoly N never anywhere in there from these filthy Republicans to these disgusting Democrats is anyone thinking, Hey, what's best for the people of Flint? This ain't right. We got to save lives. It's, Oh, I might, Oh, I might look bad for my next election. And Oh, we got to, the new regime comes in and, and I, it, it, what, what's mind boggling is so Snyder was a Republican, correct. And he was replaced by a Democrat, correct? Yep. So you would think the Democrats would want to come in and fry him and say, see, I I'm, I'm the savior. I fixed everything. Those uh, awful Republicans, just just from a purely, just you know, help your own statistics. Not even if you didn't care about human beings. Just even if you're just a heartless politician, which you probably are if you're in either one of those parties. So, but even just from a like, oh, this is good PR. This is this will help me get reelected. Standpoint, you would think the Democrat would come in and go, ah, Snyder, we're going to fry that asshole and put him in jail. What what do you think? Why why do you think the Democrats? would clean house on the attorney general and then basically from what you're saying have completely sort of swept the initial investigation under the rug the one that was charging snyder with manslaughter well first of all i don't want to get so in the weeds that people get confused but it's actually worse than sweeping it under the rug so the current attorney general who's no fan of mine that's fine um she's a democrat and while she was a candidate for attorney general so the original investigation was still going on. She had not won yet. While she was a candidate, she was literally publicly shitting on the investigation. So A, I've spoken with legal people. That's that's just unheard of. She, she hadn't seen one piece of evidence. She hadn't seen one document. I mean, legally, how are you commenting on their investigation if you don't have any access to it as, as a, you know, as a lawyer? You're running to be attorney general. You are commenting on an investigation that you would be overtaking that you only know, you don't know anything about, really. You only know something, you don't only know what the, the charges you see, but you don't know the evidence they have. And I know for a fact, based on sources, the original investigation had defendants cooperating with them at that time to move up the totem pole. They were working at like an old school mob case, start with the low people, move right. it up, move it up to the mob boss. Those defendants, they quieted up. They saw this attorney general shitting on the investigation and they rolled the dice. All right. Well, if she's up in the polls, she's going to win. She's probably going to fire them. And that's exactly what happened. So not only did I don't want to say obstruct because I, I legally I don't know if that's what happened, but she basically sabotaged this investigation. Why did she do it? You know, I could only speculate. But, you know, at the end of the day, the special prosecutor was a Republican. Um, the attorney general was a Republican that was overseeing this. So maybe it is that they didn't want the overall credit to go to her predecessor, who was a Republican, 
or a special prosecutor. I mean, I don't know. I'm just speculating. But let's say for argument's sake, benefit of the doubt. All right, whatever. The attorney general, she comes in. New people come in. They want their own people. Fine. You fire the special prosecutor. You don't fire the entire team. I, I was told that they barely debriefed. They barely even got a debrief from the team. So you are tossing out three years of investigation. You can't replace that institutional knowledge of who all the players are, of where all the bodies are buried. Um, so they got rid of them and then, quote unquote, started over. But the problem is what you started over with is weaker than what the original team had. And, you know, I, I just don't know. Based, I'm not a lawyer, but based on what I have found and reported, there is more than a misdemeanor for the governor. Uh, there is at least misconduct in office. That's what that's what um, they found, uh, misconduct in office, including neglect of duty. Um, we're not even getting to the federal case. He perjured himself in front of Congress, but just the state of Michigan. Um, there's involuntary manslaughter. Um, there's other statutes in terms of negligence. Um, and then we have to go to, again, his top advisor, his right-hand man, who went around Flint saying, we're best friends. I'm here on behalf of the governor. Richard Baird hired R Governor Snyder, gave him his first job out of college. They're like that. How is it that this man is going around offering payoffs to sick Flint residents? How is it that this man is going around extorting people? That's what they charged him with, extortion. How is it that this man, I, I found out through my reporting, he was basically trying to line up environmental department officials, health department officials who were being subpoenaed by the prosecution for interviews, get them in a room and give them a story. That's obstruction of justice. You can't try to dictate what defendants are going to tell a criminal investigation. He was doing that. He was basically giving them their message uh, to go and basically make stuff up under oath. How is it? How is it that you can find that the governor's proxy who said, I am here on behalf of Governor Snyder. He said that countless meetings. He said that in one meeting where he offered a payoff to a sick Flint resident. She's on the record, but there's no tie to the governor. Either his right-hand man is the most renegade cowboy who just does whatever he wants without anyone knowing, or he was doing it on behalf of the governor. And, you know, it's, it's a shame really, because honestly, to me, Flint is not just this is not just about Flint, Michigan. It's not just about water. It's about do we live in a country or do we live in a multi-trillion dollar corporate conglomerate? Because this is how corporations act, not governments. This is corporations yeah. like du DuPont and Dow Chemical and Monsanto. Uh, they poison people. They pay, you know, pennies, whatever, to their settlements. And then they move on and no one goes to jail. But technically, if a government poisons people, you would think there's going to be some accountability, but we're not seeing that. And um, everything, you know, I really encourage people. I know some people don't like The Intercept, whatever. Read the story. That You know, it ain't easy to get the truth published anywhere. So I'm happy The Intercept published it. If you read these phone calls, if you if you read the phone calls in the context of what what else was going on when these calls happened, if you read the governor's briefing that mentioned Legionella, in Flint, 16 months earlier than he said he knew about it. If you read the other things in the story, you don't need to be a lawyer to know there's more than a misdemeanor there. And uh, I wish I had the answer, Graham, why they are only charging with a misdemeanor. Maybe they're going for the easy route, what they think they definitely can convict. Uh, but at least in my from my reporting, I have airtight sourcing that the original investigation felt they, were, they, they had had come to the decision to charge the governor with misconduct in office, uh, which is a felony. Uh, it can be charged as a misdemeanor, but they were going for a felony, um, five year felony, uh, negligent negligence, uh, uh, willful neglect of duty, which is a year misdemeanor. So that would have been six years if you get him on both. And they were going for involuntary manslaughter. And I will say, bottom line, it's the Republican was the governor. But the, now, the current governor is a Democrat. And let's just drop the veil. The Democratic attorney general, she ain't doing these things without the governor knowing. The attorney yeah. general, 
and the governor, they're supposed to be independent. That's not how it works anywhere. They could tell you that's how it works. The sitting governor, I mean, she's not not involved. I want to, you know, fairness to her. There was a kidnapping plot, an assassination plot against her. I get she's been busy with COVID and things like I want to be fair, but she knows what's going on. Um, and it, it's just disgusting. And you know what? Honestly, it's insulting. Flint is a majority black and brown city, but there's a lot of poor white people, too. And it is insulting when President Obama goes in there two days before uh, this recent election, pretends like, yeah, things are improving there. He could have Obama. He didn't send the Army Corps of Engineers in to dig up those pipes. He could have declared a federal disaster. He didn't. He declared a federal emergency, which is different. So let me tell you, if this happened in Beverly Hills, uh, oh. you know, Wilshire Avenue or whatever, the not, a, 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 it wouldn't have happened. But B, if it did, you better believe the National Guard would be in and it would be fixed in six weeks, not six years. Oh, yeah. I mean, six weeks on the outset. I mean, that, that I mean, that would have been like they would have, you know, choppered in spring water from the goddamn Swiss Alps if that happened in Beverly Hills, man. Um uh, so uh, I got, I have so many questions here. First of all, just to clarify, is not the attorney general appointed by the governor? No, attorney general's elected. Attorney general's elected. Okay. But the people of Michigan elected a Democrat governor and a Democrat attorney general in the same election cycle, correct? Yeah. And the attorney general, by the way, ran one of her cornerstones was justice for Flint shitting on the original investigation. And by the way, like I'm not carrying water for the original investigation. I don't, you know, I don't have a, I don't have a horse. I'm just following the facts. I, I, I've i been to Flint many, many times, too many, because, uh, you know, I never see my wife anymore. All I'm doing is Flint. And I can tell you, based on what I have seen, and I have obtained a lot of documents that I shouldn't have. I obtained them legally, by the way. Um, I will tell you, this was a damn good original investigation. I mean, they had the they had the goods, not only on Snyder, but his top people. Uh, one has to ask today, why were there no charges against Snyder's chief of staff, who was kind of the middleman for all this? He knew what was going on. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, she, she, you know, I don't know. And, and I will say, um, you know, she's been on CNN quite a bit. Uh, she's gotten a lot of airtime on C CNN, on MSNBC, you know, fighting the fight against Trump. Uh, even long before, by the way, the Capitol attacks, uh, the Michigan attorney general, you know, fighting the fight against Trump, Gretchen Whitmer, the Michigan um, governor. She basically, you know, might as well get a get a get a, a, a green room to live in at MSNBC and CNN uh, during covid. Uh, I'm not saying that governors and attorney generals can't do media, but it's very clear to me they're they both. I mean, if not for George Floyd, Governor Gretchen Whitmer might have been the vice presidential pick. Uh, Joe Biden, you know, <laughs> he he was very fond of her, I hear. Um, so uh, it was between Whitmer and Amy Klobuchar before George Floyd. Um, so, you know, I think there are political ambitions here. And I just, to me, and I'm, you know, I don't pretend to be neutral in this. I've sat on porches with children that can no longer recite the alphabet. I have sat with people that are dying. And I don't know how the chief executive of a state can preside over this, how there could be extremely suspicious series of phone calls mm -hmm. between the governor, his chief of staff, um, and the health director, how there can be a briefing addressed to the governor, which by the way, in my story, Graham, this briefing that was titled Governor's Briefings from October, 2014, that mentioned Legionella, which Schneider claims he didn't know about till a year and a half later. The, invest, the uh, investigators presented this briefing to the head of the health department when they interviewed him. He broke down. He broke down on the verge of tears when he saw this briefing. It was described to me, he froze and then he broke down because he had seen that before and he knew, yeah, they got it. You know, they got it. So the evidence is there. And uh, I think it's I think they should really at some point have to explain themselves and moving it forward. Listen, this is a state of Michigan investigation. But Rick Snyder also perjured himself in front of Congress 
Joe Biden said a lot of big words about restoring the soul of the nation and all these different things. Well, he's got the White House, he's got the Senate now, he's got the House, and you know, well, let the, me, Republican, let's, the Republican governor perjured himself in front of Congress. That's a federal crime. So Joe Biden and his Department of Justice and his Oversight Committee, they could certainly do something now. Well, that's what I want to talk about. And, and I, I, um, because, well, that's, I mean, look, I don't want to hear any more fucking complaining from the, from the liberals. Like you, you've got, Trump's gone. He's going to be gone next week, barring whatever chaos happens next week. But but next week, after the 20th, the Democrats have the House, the Congress, and the Senate. I don't want to hear any excuses. You can't blame the Republicans and Trump and Russia and Jill Stein and Byrne Bros and me, 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 Susan Saran and whatever nonsense you want to complain about. Like, you have it. I don't want to hear it anymore. I don't want to hear, oh, we, we got to wait till the midterms. We got to wait for this and wait for that. No, no, you have all the power. Do it. So that's my question to you is, is there any talk or any inclination of a federal investigation since the state of Michigan is so clearly not doing their job? Uh, I don't want to, I don't want to pretend that I had a one-on-one -on -one pipeline with them. I've never spoken with Elijah Cummings before he died, but I do know from many, many sources that Elijah Cummings, when he was still alive and was the oversight chairman was trying to get Snyder back in because he knew he lied. <laughs> um, but the Republicans still controlled the Senate, so he couldn't do it. Couldn't get it done. Um, Right now, it's Carolyn Maloney, who is another, frankly, you know, I'll let other people characterize her, but she's the oversight committee chairman. She was just very narrowly reelected. She's been a corporate Democrat forever. She's from New York. Uh, she has the power right now. She's not precluded from dragging Rick Snyder back to, and by the way, he was just charged with a crime. Even though it's a parking ticket, it was a crime. So wouldn't you think, hey, the state of Michigan is charging him. Let's bring him back and ask him some follow-up questions. Hey, there's new reporting that indicates we want to ask him about these calls. We want to ask him about this briefing when you told us you knew about this uh, a year and a half later. Um, I haven't heard anything. I mean, granted, you know, there's impeachment and all these things, but I haven't heard anything uh, from the Democrats on this. And unfortunately, they are going to. They are going to gaslight. They are going to say, no, no, no. I mean, I'm already hearing it. Well, we have to undo Trump's damage domestically and foreign uh, abroad. There's so much to unwind. Uh, we can't do big things. We got to, you know, first undo the damage. First of all, Biden could undo the damage Trump did like that through executive action. You could restore oh, all, they, yes. all, all the clean air, clean water, done. drilling, all that. Executive action, done. That should um, be day one. Like day one. Right. Oh, that's the thing. Oh, we got to undo. All this. Okay, great. There's day one. Undo, 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 undo. Okay, now. Now we, it's done. It's like Trump's gone. You undid all of his nonsense. Now what? Like, uh, it doesn't take months for Joe, for executive orders. They can be written out in an hour. I mean, literally, like, his transition team should have everything drafted right now. So, like, his hand comes off the Bible. Oh, they hug and kiss and take some photos and then sits his old ass down and just writes this and gets this done. Well, there's also another element here as to my working theory, an educated working theory, because I've dedicated the last five years to the Flint water crisis story. I think there's a financial pro a financial incentive not to do anything either. And I'll tell you why. This wasn't in my story because I only I literally had to rush this out to be because charges were going out. So the reason that Flint was on the Flint River in the first place was because of a financial deal that basically was a privatization scheme. They were building a brand new water pipeline. It was called the KWA pipeline. People in Michigan know what I'm talking about. And essentially the KWA pipeline was, they were building it on the same exact pathway of the, of the existing Detroit water pipeline that Flint had gotten its water from since the sixties. They never had a problem getting water from Detroit. Yeah, they complained Detroit kept hiking rates and all this stuff, but essentially, city of Flint officials and some state officials, they wanted to build this new pipeline. This new pipeline was going to, was going to deliver raw water. Whereas Detroit's water pipeline was delivering treated water. The difference is, you know what you need? You know what people use raw water for Graham? Fracking. They use raw water for things like fracking. They use raw water for things like um, meat packing. 
They use raw water for things like auto making, for sugar beet farming, raw water. And Rick Snyder wanted to frack, not wanted to, he did frack the hell out of Michigan, particularly Western Michigan. So they were building this brand new pipeline, but they didn't have all the money they needed to, to, to construct it. So Genesee County, which Flint is part of Genesee County, they needed, they needed to get another city on the pipeline to, so that another city could borrow money. So essentially a fraud, allegedly fraudulent deal was struck so that Flint, a basically bankrupt city, it wasn't officially bankrupt, but close, Flint was legally not able to borrow any more money in 2014. It had reached its debt limit. So there was a, it, 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 it was basically a consent order uh, issued that gave Flint an exception to borrow $85 million, $85 million uh, to get on this pipeline. So bottom line, there was a allegedly fraudulent deal so that Flint could borrow money to, per, to join this water pipeline. While that water pipeline was be, being constructed, instead of just keeping Flint on Detroit's water system until, the, until that new pipeline was built, they said, oh, let's try to save money. We'll put them on the Flint River. So that's why Flint was on the Flint River in the first place, because of this totally unnecessary pipeline that essentially was going to be used not to, they, they build it as, oh, this new pipeline, we're not getting water from Detroit anymore. So now we're going to, the rates will be cheaper for Flint residents because we're going to have a regional pipeline system. Well, that never happened. Uh, De Detroit, by the way, before Flint went on the Flint River, Graham, Detroit offered to cut its rate in half, 50% to keep Flint because Flint was its biggest water customer. Detroit said, if you stay with us, we're cutting your rates in half. This would pose, they did the math, you would be saving 20% over this other pipeline if you stay with Detroit. They continued, they said, no, we're going to go with this new pipeline. Why? Because they wanted this brand new water pipeline, A, for fracking. B, there was money to be had, Graham. You know who did the bond deal for this pipeline? JP Morgan, Wells Fargo. There was a, and by the way, there was a the whole the same banks, by the way, that had yeah. money in, in uh, the Dakota access pipeline. Yep. By the way, there's a whole lot of real, real estate developers making money uh, because they were using uh, the pipeline route uh, was making the land more valuable. So it, it's just, it's unbelievably corrupt. The whole thing, frankly, to me, the most frustrating part my my partner, Jen, who worked on the story with me, she's got COVID, by the way. She's had it for two months, thanks to that fucking asshole, Rudy Giuliani, and that maskless lunatic, Sidney Powell, and Rudy Giuliani. Uh, Jen went to cover his crazy press conference in November. Uh, they wouldn't wear masks. It was in a very tight space in the RNC building in D.C. She is now one of the, quote unquote, long haulers. Every morning, she's sending me her thermometer. She still has a low grade fever two months later, um, brain fog, all these things. So Jen worked on this story with me through these symptoms. Um, but Jen has literally sent our story. She's probably sent out 300 emails since yesterday to media. I think two picked it up. It, how do you report on the governor being charged without reporting that the intercept, which is like, it's pretty well known just broke that he was engaged in a cover-up. I mean, it's it's mind-boggling. So to me, I mean, I could do three hours on the media and the corporate media. That's why I created Status Coup, because the media in this country is complicit in the corruption. They're part of the corruption. Yeah. They yeah. allow it to they allow it to happen. And it's the local media that's toxic um, and the national media. I mean, CNN literally did 40, I saw them do 40 seconds this morning. And it, it's exactly like you said, they, they build it as justice. The governor's being charged. Yeah, it, it, it's closed. We got it. Yay, we won. It's. I mean, they do that with all these, any sort of massive egregious, when the ruling class commits an egregious crime, they always, somebody gets busted and it's just like, oh, case closed. I mean, look, I mean, Epstein is the greatest case. Like, oh, we got him. We got Jaleen Mack. We got him. We got done. 
wait a minute, let's look at their files. Let's let's talk about why. Wait a minute, who are all these people? They wheeled out cartloads of stuff out of Epstein's home in in his penthouse in New York City. Where's all that information? Case closed. Got it. Same thing with Snyder. We got him. Wait a minute. Let's go through the the investigation, like you said, that the attorney general did. Um, the original investigation. We're not, why aren't we talking about that? No, 40 seconds. And then CNN can say, yeah, we talked about it. We, we covered that case. We covered it. It's, I, it's I, I will, you know, you got nearly 700 people. Let's give some behind the scenes here because I'm a little pissed off. Let's do it. I, I, I drove nine hours straight uh, to Michigan uh, recently during this pandemic. Uh, so I didn't have to fly. And I met in a parking lot, I think it was 10 degrees, <laughs> with an editor from the Detroit Free Press. I pitched this to them first because I felt this would get a lot more impact if it was in a Michigan outlet. Mm -hmm. um, and Detroit Free Press is pretty big. Uh, they had passed on stories I did before. So this was a step in the right direction. All right, they're actually meeting with me. I don't, you know, I wasn't going to give them everything I had via email because a lot of these places will try to steal your shit. New York right. Times has tried to steal my stuff before, but I met with him. I showed him everything I had. He said to me, and I quote, yeah, I kind of regret that we haven't done more on the investigative side here. We've covered the medical stuff, but we haven't really, we haven't really done much as far as the cover up. I said, well, uh, you know, we all forgive here. You here, here it is. Did, you know, let Detroit free press could do it. I don't need, I told him, listen, if you, want to, if you want to throw one of your reporters' names up there with me to feel more comfortable, I'll take second fiddle. You could put one of your reporters first, even though I got all this with Jen. So he told me, yeah, I regret not doing more. He said, well, what you have here is kind of circumstantial. I said, yeah, we're not, we don't have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt in a court of law. But journalistically, what we have here is the governor of Michigan, six months after the water switch, his chief of staff, his health director scrambling on the phone for two days in rapid fire phone calls while Legionella, the deadly Legionella outbreak that he claimed he didn't know anything about till much later, is setting off alarm bells in his environmental department, in his health department. I said to, De I said to Detroit Free Press, do you think they were on the phone like doing, like discussing the weather? What do you think they were talking about? Like, you know, most investigative reporting, a lot of it is circumstantial, but it's circumstantial based on documents and facts and sources. I mean, hell, we just had Russiagate for five years, which was not even circumstantial. It was out of thin air. So he said, all right, uh, you know, if it was it was up to me, this editor, I would say yes, but I got to go to my editor above me. I said, OK, I held it for a week. I didn't reach out to any other outlet. He comes back to me. Uh, yeah, we think what you have is great here, but we just don't have the resources right now to invest in this. I said, really, because I've done my homework and you have an investigative team of seven reporters. You don't have the resources with seven reporters? What are you, what are you currently investigating? I understand COVID has hit Michigan hard. So, okay, I'm assuming some of your reporters are on that. Uh, but what are you investigating that you don't have the resources to possibly break the biggest environmental cover-up of the 21st century. I say that like, this is the biggest, let's take away environmental and just say, this is one of the biggest cover-ups of the 21st century. They were covering this up in real time as people were drinking that water, not after, during. And he said to me, we just don't have the resources. I wish you luck. So this is the Detroit Free Press, okay? Free Press is in the name. I've had the Detroit news when I broke with Jen, the story for Vice. We broke for Vice in April, Graham, that the governor's right-hand man was going around offering payouts, payoffs mm -hmm. to sick Flint residents. We broke in April that the governor knew about Legionella then. We just didn't have the phone calls then, but we had everything else. We broke in April, previously unknown details about that shady financial deal I told you about. Detroit Free Press tells me, yeah, a lot of this has been reported already. I said, what are you talking about? None of this has been reported. None of this has been reported. They wouldn't talk. They wouldn't do it. The local Flint Journal, 
the local Flint Journal, which is the Flint Journal, it's the Flint hometown paper. They have literally been reporting press releases from Rick Snyder's administration for six years. I, I literally email the main Flint reporter from the Flint Journal who's been on the Flint water crisis at this point, I don't even give a fuck. And I email him subject line, are you gonna perform journalism today? Link. Because they won't touch this stuff. So this isn't only about Graham, lazy media. This isn't only about, um, I don't know, just bad media, inept media. They're making active choices to be part of the cover-up. They're making active choices to cover, to stop this information from reaching its readers. So I don't know, like I said, you know, I literally drove to Michigan in part to meet with the Detroit Free Press because I'm not sending these documents via right. email. I'm not sending them via fax. Uh, you know, I, I'm not sending them anywhere. They, they, you know, I have to show you. And I have the, I mean, I have the receipts and the intercept to its credit. I know a lot of people, you know, have issues, but when they saw this, they were like, holy shit, let's start writing this. Like that's how actual journalists think, but we don't have any. I mean, frankly, if we want to really put it out there, I mean, obviously I was let go from the Young Turks for other reasons, but before I was let go a few months earlier, I had to fight with Jenk to send me to Flint. He didn't want to, he, he didn't want to send me to Flint anymore. He said it was a local story at this point. I said to him, Jank, didn't you just raise $2 million off of my name and my work? Well, guess what? They gave you $2 million because I keep going back to Flint, because I keep going, because I kept going to Standing Rock. So like, you're saying it's a local story? Um, I don't think poisoning American citizens and then leaving them to die is local. I mean, it's happening in a city per se. And you want, you don't want to send me there, but you want me to, you want to shift my attention to investigating Trump. I told him I left the corporate media for a reason. I'm not interested in investigating Trump. I mean, am I going to break? He wanted me to investigate uh, the Bank of Cyprus and Wilbur, Wilbur Ross, his commerce secretary. So, you know, that's a whole nother story. But it, it honestly, man, we it's not just that we need new public. It's not just that we need new elected officials. We need an entire new media system. The, the Telecommunications Act of 1996, which kind of sounds boring and who cares about that act, that the Telecommunications Act of 1996 signed by Bill Clinton has helped create all of this because it has basically created a facade that is the media. We don't have media. We have corporations that have hijacked journalistic institutions. And, you know, I see all the time, Graham, I know I'm long winded, but I'll wrap it up. No, I, see all, I see all the time, you know, these pissing matches on Twitter uh, and um, between Jimmy and this person. I see piss, you know, I see pissing matches, people calling, saying I'm not a journalist, this and that. Um, I see people claiming they're journalists and claiming theories as journalism and this and that. The bottom line is I, I don't have the authority on journalists. I'm not God's gift to the world by any means. But I will say this, it is alarming to me. And Jen, my partner, feels the same way. I keep going back to Flint. There are no investigate. There, let me rephrase. There are about two investigative reporters still reporting on the Flint water crisis in a country of, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50,000 journalists. There's about two still investigating the Flint water crisis. There's about I'd say 10 to 15 journalists that investigate indigenous stories and indigenous communities fighting pipelines. There is about, I don't know, a handful uh, covering Black Lives Matter before George Floyd. Um, half the time, I, go, I mean, I wish I had a documentary crew following me, but I don't have the money. I, I, I remember, Graham, I was in Cleveland last year there was a press conference held by uh, activists because in Cleveland, they had in a month, 90 children were, uh, had high lead levels. Majority black city in, in, in a month, they found 90 kids with elevated blood levels, which is kind of a sign that there's something wrong. They were on the, they were on the, the steps of city hall, Graham, 
Do you know I, who am not from Cleveland, myself and my cameraman, was the only media there? I mean, it's just people don't get it. We shit on MSNBC. We, we shit on uh, MSNBC, uh, MSNBC, CNN, New York Times. I don't think people get the magnitude of the media crisis. There is no media. There is local media that essentially just reports what the police tell them, yeah. reports what the governor tells them, mm -hmm. uh, and shut. And that's it. And it's uh, until, you know, we can protest governors, we could protest presidents, we could protest uh, health departments, we could protest all these things. Until you get your ass outside CNN, outside MSNBC, outside your local media, to be clear, I'm not talking about being violent. I'm just talking about public pressure, nonviolent movements. You should, you ain't, nothing is going to change until you shame these media companies. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's really, it's, it's alarming and, and, and really disheartening. I mean, because you've got the big media giants and then you've just got a bunch of shows like ours. I mean, they're, they're really like, we're barely, you know, I mean, <laughs> and then, you know, TYT, which was supposed to be the big hero of the online independent media has gone. They're just MSNBC light now. And this is not the first Chenk didn't want to do something for, you know, any sort of, he didn't want to do any activist thing. I just not, it's, again, that's all, that's all I've heard from about this guy. You know, Jimmy was like, we should, you know, organize a, a boycott of Walmart. He's like, oh, I don't really want to support unions, you know, cause then he'd have to unionize his staff. And I mean, it's just, it's embarrassing. It's embarrassing. I mean, it's really, I mean, it's, I really, I, I honestly have like, I mean, I, I, there's days I go, am I really, it's just, it's, it's, there's like, nine of us trying. I mean, I'm a goddamn comedian. Like I, I could, I should be telling jokes and surfing instead. You know, like I, this is, this is, I, 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 it's amazing that this is like, you're like an actual journalist. Then you got comedians like me and Jimmy and Lee camp and you know, and there's nobody, I mean, like I, it's, it's insane to me. I feel like, like we're the only ones even trying and, 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 yeah, I don't even know. I don't even know what the fuck to do sometimes. I really feel like I'm just, I'm, I feel like, and then, and then when you see like this, like all this cat fighting online, you know, Jimmy just wanted to do force the vote and people were like, well, it's a good idea, but I don't like Jimmy. So I'm not going to get behind it. And all of that crap. Let just me like, tell you, if that was Jenks idea, the same exact people that were against it would have been. <laughs> yeah. And, and you know what? I would have supported Chink for that. And so would have Jimmy. And so would have you. Cause I would have gone, yeah, there's a lot I disagree with Chink with, but it's a good idea. A good idea is a good idea. Look, if Trump said, I'm going to give Medicare for all before I leave office, I'd be like, great. You racist asshole. I thank you for free healthcare. You know, like I don't like you, but thank you for the free healthcare. He wanted to give me two grand and Pelosi doesn't, I, I would have taken his two grand and gone, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to, whatever I'm going to do with this, I'm going to give this to black lives matter by Bitcoin or something. But just like, I, 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 and the fact that like I've watched you cover Flint and I've watched you go out there and it's I'm I'm glad to see status quo growing and like you had a camera operator on at the Capitol last week. But again, I mean, I was that day was just scrambling to find anyone with footage. And I had you and then two other YouTubers who, <laughs> you know, have some different points of view than I do. And it was just like I I can't, you know. Cause I want to sit here and usually I like to give my audience like a, what's an action. I don't want to just complain all that everything's collapsing. Like what can you do? And obviously, like you say, pressure media, pressure the feds. But when you say that there's so much money tied to these pipelines and what, one of the things that helped create this was just fracking. Well, Joe Biden and Kamala Harris looked dead into the camera during the debates and said, we're not going to ban fracking. So, you know, I, I got to tell you, I mean, I know some people, uh, I, I think we're well past public pressure, uh, to be honest with you. I think we are well past. We're not moving Biden left. And I know some people get mad at me. I mean, I, I did vote for Biden. I'm not going to apologize for it. Uh, I, I didn't tell my viewers what to do. I, I see somebody saying I did. I literally said to my viewers, you do whatever you want. This is why I'm doing it. And the reason I did it is simple. I was at these fucking cult suicide rallies, Graham. Right. I was at these cult suicide rallies. Too many of them. And what I saw... Honestly, I always thought it was overblown. Oh, he's Hitler. He's a fascist. I, I never went there. But what I saw 
as bad as Biden is, I, I truly felt if he was reelected, I, I don't know what this man is capable of. Uh, that doesn't mean I think Biden is wonderful, but you really, at some, uh, to me, it wasn't lesser of two evils. It was literally, this man is asking people to come out during a deadly pandemic. He's glorifying them not wearing masks. He's asking them to go to polling places on election day to you know, have order, i.e. intimidate people. And he's joking, joking that he wants to serve more than two terms. So, I mean, I'm a Jew. I, I'm, not, I'm not a religious Jew, but I know my history. You know, these things kind of develop into worse. It, it doesn't need to develop into Adolf Hitler, but it can develop into worse than what we saw. So my decision was, you know, I'm just going to, I drank whiskey and I sent in my mail-in ballot because I, I just, I'd rather, I'd rather, my, if I have two choices, I'd rather fight Joe Biden and Neera Tandon than Donald Trump and, and QAnon and Donald Trump and, and Proud Boys and Donald Trump and Rudy and God knows. But the point is, yes, I, you know, I didn't say, I'm not like Jank, yeah, let's get him elected and then we'll move him left on, we're not moving Joe Biden left. At this point, it's very, very hard because there's a pandemic. But at this point, I believe the only way you're going to move A, the media, B, the politicians, you have to move the donors. The donors are the ones making the decisions, not Joe Biden, not Kamala Harris, not Mitch McConnell, Jeff Bezos, the Waltons, all of them, the real estate developers, the fossil fuel, the fossil fuckers, as I call them, big pharma, big real estate, Silicon Valley, we need a general strike. We need to mm -hmm. damage the, the corporate bottom line. That means a massive collective action in America to stop using companies like Amazon, to stop using corporate banking, to stop, uh, if you can, if you, you know, if you have the means, stop fast food. Obviously, a lot of poor people could only afford that. Um, there's, a, there's a whole list that needs to, needs to be stopped. Because let me tell you something, Graham, what will have more effect on Joe Biden? You could have thousands of people outside of the White House. But if you have Jeff Bezos call him, if you have the Waltons call him, if you have um, name your oil executive, name your defense contractor, name your whomever, you'll see change in this country extremely quick. That because yeah. these people they don't see red, they don't see blue, they see green. And I we talked about this, I think, last time. Great example. The owner of the Washington football team. Yep. Right? Yep. He said, over my dead body, I'm not changing the name. He well, said that for 15 years. <laughs> right. And there was a pressure campaign. Uh Fed it got pressure campaign not on him, on FedEx and the sponsors. And the sponsors, FedEx, felt the heat. They saw, oh shit, this is going to hurt us. They went to him. If you don't change the name, we're pulling out. It's called FedEx Field. If you don't change the name, we're pulling out. Change the name. That's how change happens. I'm not saying let's not focus on electoral politics, but you know, you're not getting anywhere. Um, you're not getting anywhere without. And by the way, it's they're going to gaslight you. Biden, I, I don't think Biden's going to run for a second term if he even makes it that far. They're going to gaslight you. They're going to say, no, no, now's not the time for this progressive primaries and prog progressive change. Trump is still possibly a threat to run again. Um, you know, we're still in the middle of coronavirus. They're going to they're going to just pummel any primary challenges to corporate Democrats. Uh, they are not going to do universal basic income. They are not going to do Medicare for all. They're going to give you the narrative. Yeah, no, we can't do big things right now. Let's just focus on normalizing things. Let's just get back to brunch. So to me, whether it's Flint or anything else, um, I know people are dejected. I'm very dejected. I know people feel, what's the point? Well, if we're going to, that's what, that's where they want you. Mentally, that's where they want you. Cause that's when people give up. That's why half the country doesn't vote. I'm not blaming people who don't vote and saying they're weak, but they want you in that mentality that there's nothing I could do. It's corrupt. And, and to be just apathetic and you can't, cannot allow that to happen. So I thank you. I thank Jimmy. I, I think a lot of people. Um, and I, you know, I think that if there is some really, really wealthy actual progressives out there, we need 
we need a media, we need a really unified, a progressive media that's well-funded uh, from, from good sources. Not, not, not that we wouldn't need viewer funding too, because I mean, I'm not gonna lie to you, I, I am literally burning myself out. Not, I'm not saying that to brag, like I'm getting sick no, because I I'm trying to balance live streaming every day with investigative reporting, with running a business, and I just don't have the investment money I don't have the money to hire new other people. So it's, yeah, we're all in this boat. I mean, we're literally all fried. I mean, you're, you're busting your ass a lot. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm just a guy alone. I have like a part-time assistant kind, you know, and then I've got an editor who just edits and posts, but I don't have, I mean, literally this is everything that's going on. I, I turn on, I hook up, I'm sitting all like, we're all in this boat. I would, I would love the real backing to be, I would love to send a team of, uh, you know, camera crews out all over the country to cover all this stuff. Like, I, I mean, we all wish we had that and we need, we need, we did, we, we did have that, you know what it was called the young Turks until they I stopped know. doing that. I know. I know. That's why we all gravitated to it. I mean, you worked there for years. Jimmy worked there for 10 years. Ron Placone worked there. When I first got brought, I was like, man, this, for the first time I walked into their set on Culver city, I was like, Oh yeah, this is what I'm talking about. This is what we need. This kind of infrastructure, but for real independent news. And then, you know, when you say we need somebody with money, obviously not the Kat Katzenberg or somebody like that, not Hollywood neoliberals that, you know. <laughs> so yeah, man, I mean, I, I appreciate you saying all that because it's, um, and I'm so down with the general strike. And again, the, 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 what happened with FedEx is such a phenomenal example and, and the, the, you know, Snyder changing the name from, from the Redskins, which is an offensive name to the Washington football club that happened overnight and that's money. And so that's what we need. We need to organize boycotts and general strikes. And cause like you say, they don't, you can't morally shame the ruling elites. They don't care. They only care about money. When you hurt their dollars, everything changes. Here's another great example. All of a sudden, overnight, all these 200 some companies that have all been donating to Republicans and Democrats too, all of a sudden, a bunch of them all were not donating to the Republicans that didn't want to uh, vote for the, you know, to, you know, certify the election. Oh, all of a sudden, all these big, awful corporations, because you know what? It's bad for business to be associated with Nazis taking over the Capitol building. That doesn't look good for your stock portfolio. They, if look, look, if, if Nazis taking over the Capitol building helped their business model, they'd be like, Hey, it's time for a revolution freedom. Like they don't give a shit. Let's be real clear. They're not noble people. Um, so that's what we have to do. You're absolutely correct. And I know, um, I, I know you, 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 you gotta get going. I've, you've been on the show for a while today, but I, I, Jordan, I really like, I applaud what you're doing and, and, and you know, the fact that your wife has COVID because you went to all these Trump rallies where they didn't wear masks and then would get mad at people wearing masks. That's the site. I don't get that. Like, no, 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 no. My wife, my wife, thank God, doesn't have COVID. Jen's my business partner. Jen, your business partner. Okay. Okay. Sorry. I got that confused. Jen, your business partner. Um, but again, that's still, she got that working, doing, doing, uh, journalism for status quo. Uh, and you, you, you're, you're covering stuff that, you know, I don't have a team of people. I can't send a camera crew out. I'm not, I, you know, I mean, it was, I was on the street a little bit for some of the George Floyd pro protests. And if something happened in LA, I could go cover it with my fucking iPhone or whatever, but like, that's the best I can do, man. So, um, you know, I would say, and again, this is not, I'm not saying this to get like a low blow in or anything, but I will say, you know, to Jenk specifically, I'm not asking, you know, I'm not going back there. Don't get me wrong. I mean, you got $20 million. You got to have some of that money left, right? <laughs> you just raised $2 million from viewers. I don't, you know, I don't know what their financial situation is, but you have more money than Graham and I combined. <laughs> Hire a few reporters and go cover some things other than Trump. Because I'm telling you, maybe something happened that you don't see it anymore. There is a huge demand for the Flint stories of the world, the Standing Rock stories of the world, the single mother in a trailer park stories of the world, a lot of stories. Um, there is a huge demand. It doesn't mean you can't do your little hot take show uh, that people know the Young Turks for, but you have, he's got way more money than anybody. 
Hey, I've pitched Jimmy. I'll say the same thing to Jimmy. Hey, imagine Jimmy. You're, you're, I mean, his super chat, it's like the Bank of England. Um, why don't you hire some reporters that you can do your commentary off of some of their investigators? You wouldn't have to do anything. Just give them money and send them out. Um, the bottom line is, to me, I, I think that the reason we live in an oligarchy is because the information war has been won by the oligarchy. Yeah. The information war, basically the oligarchy is running our information airwaves. And by the way, we haven't even gotten to Silicon Valley throttling the hell out of us. Yep. Do you know that for our big story we just broke, we couldn't even get Twitter ads approved because they said it was political? It's political breaking a story that a former governor was involved in a cover-up that killed people. They disapproved our ads. We were trying to literally give Twitter money, pay Twitter money to buy ads to boost the tweets, just like you could do for Facebook. And they are blocking you from doing that, citing politics. Well, let me, they're, they're blocking you from doing it for a reason. There are, by the way, you know this, there are channels, I don't want to dismiss those channels, but there are channels that have way less subscribers than you do, than I do, that I see getting more live viewers than you or I, that have like 20,000 subscribers. Mm -hmm. How is that? You want to know why? Because they haven't been hit by the algorithm yet. Yeah. I mean, it's it's really, we live in a, it's, it, you know, people are talking about censorship because of what Silicon Valley is doing and, you know, purging Republicans of this and that there's day-to-day -day censorship happening on this platform, on Twitter, yep. just in their algorithm. So yeah. Uh, you know, Hey man, uh, I, after impeachment, I'm probably taking a week or two. I'm getting a dog with my wife. I'm spending time with my wife. I need to recharge. Uh, cause if not, I'm going to burn out. But the last thing I'll say is just, I think that, the Flint water crisis, which, by the way, I know people kind of people get a little numb to terms, right? Crisis. It's an active crisis right now. We think about the capital attack as a crisis because it's, it's very new. The Flint water crisis is an active crisis right now. People are dying in Flint right now, not because just of COVID, but because of heavy metal lead poisoning, bacterial poisoning. And, other, and frack, they just re, they just found out, it went out in the news the other day, Graham, that they were dumping fracking waste in the Flint River while they were drinking that water. So people are dying right now in Flint. People in Flint are dying of kidney failure. They are dying of uh, thyroid cancers. They are dying of, um, they are slowly deteriorating with Parkinson's, epilepsy. These are young people, 30s, 40s, 50s. They don't have Medicare for all in Flint. You know who does? Libby, Montana, 96% white. They had an asbestos outbreak about a decade or so ago. 96% white. A couple hundred people died. It was, it was rammed into Obamacare that the people of Libby, Montana would get essentially Medicare for all. And they deserve it. I don't care if you're white or black. They should have. People of Flint, 52% black. They get a nice misdemeanor charge for the governor, some filters for their water, and have a good life. If you want to live in that country, go ahead. I'm not going to live in that country. I'm going to continue fighting to expose it. And I thank you, Graham, because honestly, um, you know, let's just call it what it is. There's even people in our sandbox, progressive media, that, you know, they're spending all fucking day in these Twitter wars. I can't get them to retweet this. Mm-hmm. I'm not asking you to read, you know, I'm not trying to get this story retweeted for my tweet, for my fame, my ego. The only way you even shame the media into doing write-ups is to get ma major traction on things. So, um, you know, and by the way, 800 people watching, do me a favor. Tech, uh, tweet Michael Moore. For some reason, Michael Moore can tweet a whole lot of things about himself, but not other people's stories. Tweet at Michael Moore, because if Michael Moore tweets this, it becomes national. If Michael Moore rants, it becomes national. At M.M. Flint. And by the way, I like Michael Moore. I'm not like attacking him. Maybe he didn't see it. Maybe he's focused on other things. Who knows? But 
People need help, not just with coronavirus. People need help. And they're not going to get help if the media keeps covering up what's happening. Shame on the Detroit Free Press. Shame on the Detroit News. Shame on Rachel Maddow, by the way, who showed up in Flint for, for a town hall, got all this fame, and then dropped them dead. Didn't cover it at all for four years later so she could fucking, you know, rant about the Russian boogeyman. Shame on her. Shame on all of them. And, um, you know, props to you and others who have elevated this, this story. Yeah. So I just want to, I just want to re- thank you, Jordan, for all the work that you've done and everybody at status coup, but that list of people that Jordan just read off, uh, tweet, you know, tweet Jordan's story and I'll, I'll retweet it out today as well. Um, to all those people, Rachel Maddow, the Detroit free press, make some noise, especially if you live in Michigan, like you have a little power. If you live in Michigan to go, I want this fully prosecuted. How come he got a misdemeanor? You need to, you know, if you're a resident of the state of Michigan, you're a registered voter, uh, let the governor know, let the state assembly know, uh, let your Congress people know you're not happy with this little parking ticket that Snyder got. Let them know. The only power you have is to vote them out of office. I'm telling you, the Tea Party did it the right way. I don't. I don't agree with so much of the Tea Party, but the way they pressured the Republicans, they didn't. They didn't go after Democrats. They told the Republican Party, "We're walking if we don't get what we want." We try to do it with progressives. It's like, well, wait, now's not the time. Hold on, I'm busy eating applesauce. I'm fucking so stupid. I can't fight for anything. You're using mean words. Like, oh God. Like, I'm sorry, man. I mean, get out of, if you can't handle mean words from a comedian on YouTube, get kindly with a rainbow flag and some cookies, get out. You can't handle this. I don't know. I played sports as a kid. I watched professional sports. You know what happens to a head football coach in the NFL? If he loses, if he kicks a field goal and doesn't go for it, he gets fired. The fans boo him. They go on sports talk radio. Well, this guy sucks. Get him out of here. He's blows. The quarterback's old. His arm sucks. Fire these jackasses. And the quarterback and the head coach don't go, they said mean things telling me to F off as an act of violence. So anyway, I'm just like, like you got to get it. You got to get angry. You got to push these people. You got to pressure like Jordan is saying. So, and also support uh status coup. Um, and, and this is real indie journalism. What they're doing is indie journalism. I'll try to give you and, and other in, real indie journalists as much of a platform as I can. So Jordan, thanks again. Enjoy your dog. Have a great week off. Rest up. You know, like don't burn yourself out. It's all of us can get too burnt out. If we burn ourselves out, then we can't even do this work. Which- and not that, you, not that you asked, but please send me, uh, please send me some smoothie recipes because I'm a little constipated and I need more vegetables. All right. You go plant-based, baby. Everything flows real quick. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, just a little, just a little tip. Um, well, thank you so much, Jordan. Uh, we really appreciate the work you're doing and uh, I'll push this story out there. Also, I'll put a link to this story in the show notes. Uh, so check it out, read the whole story and get all the information. So thank Thanks. you so much, man. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, brother. Later. Thanks for watching everybody. Please hit the like button, the subscribe button. Go to patreon.com slash Graham Elwood and rockfin.com slash Graham Elwood where you can support the show. Also, I have a Bitcoin wallet, a Bitcoin cash wallet, and an Ethereum wallet in the show notes. We're taking cryptocurrency. I have a Coinbase affiliation link. We're going to be getting on some other exchanges. So that's how you support the show. Make sure you hit the subscribe button. YouTube is unsubscribing us at an alarming rate. I have a PayPal button at GrahamElwood.com. I even have a Venmo at Graham-Elwood. There's a lot of ways to support our show. We are getting crushed by YouTube. They're unsubs- We've dipped under 73,000 subscribers because of YouTube. Thanks for supporting what we do.